In the summer of 2013, I found myself driving home alone on Highway 902 from a party. It was almost midnight, and needless to say, it was pitch black. As was usual at night, I was on edge. I had the radio off, and I could hear nothing but the muffled roar of tires on pavement and the dull hum of the engine. I stole a glance into the middle rear view mirror and saw nothing but darkness through the back window. I know that I looked backward and saw nothing. I'm sure of it. Just the seemingly endless blackness of night. I remember it so clearly because not 10 seconds later a car passed me to the left. Headlights on. I had one of those sudden adrenaline rushes, like when you think you see a person outside of your bedroom window when it's just a tree. Ten seconds earlier, nothing had been behind me. Suddenly, a car was behind me. I drove the rest of the way home, shivering and knowing something was off. The next morning, I found two sets of scratches near the back of my van. One was on the left rear, one was on the right. The car was pretty old. It could have been there for months, but that was the first time that I distinctly remembered seeing them. In hindsight, there are two possibilities for what happened that night. Possibility one, by some glitch in reality, or something paranormal. This car had somehow appeared behind me within 10 seconds of me checking my mirror, like some weird ghost crap or something. However, the second option is what makes my blood run cold whenever I consider it. It didn't even occur to me until months after the fact, but it makes me dread driving alone at night even more. Possibility 2. The car was normal. It had approached me from the rear and passed me to my left. However, something large and wide and as black as the night had been clinging to the rear of my car, obscuring my view through the window and leaving deep scratches on the side and it had inadvertently driven home with me. My sophomore year, I roomed with a girl named Kara. She was a jazz vocalist, but her main interest was in opera. We had a small room on the sixth floor of a dormitory. The walls were thin, and her late night singing and voice practices would keep me up late. After a month or so, I convinced her to move her late night practices to the music studios in the theater building a block away. Around 8 one evening, Kara announced that she would be practicing late for an upcoming recital. Probably wouldn't be home until around midnight. Great, I thought. That means I can go to bed early. She said goodnight and left. Coffee and sheet music in hand. I made some grilled cheese and soup, gobbled it down, and immediately began to prepare for bed. By the time I got out of the shower, my eyelids were so heavy, I could hardly brush my teeth. I pulled on my PJs and crawled into the top bunk of our bunk bed. I was out as soon as my head hit the pillow. I should take a second to describe the layout of our apartment. When entering the apartment, the bedroom was just through a door immediately to the left. Our bathroom was inside the bedroom, just past the bunk beds. Anyway, I woke up to the sound of the apartment door closing. I opened my eyes and groggily checked my phone. Midnight on the dot. I rolled back over and closed my eyes. I heard Kara enter the room and stop in front of the bunk bed, checking to see if I'm actually asleep, I thought. She flopped down on the bed below me, which was strange, as she was a stickler for brushing her teeth and, wa and washing up before bed. Then again, exams were just around the corner. We were all exhausted. The mattress below me creaked, and then was silent. I couldn't even hear her breathing. I started to drift off again. I was just on the edge of deep sleep, when I was startled awake by a noise. A key in the lock. The door opening. And Kara, entering our apartment, humming an opera tune. The mattress below me creaked. I begin tucking him into bed, and he tells me, Daddy, check for monsters under my bed. I look underneath for his amusement and see him, another him, under the bed, staring back at me, quivering and whispering, Daddy, there's somebody on my bed.
When my sister Betsy and I were kids, our family lived for a while in a charming old farmhouse. We loved exploring its dusty corners and climbing the apple tree in the backyard, but our favorite thing was the ghost. We called her mother because she seemed so kind and nurturing. Some mornings, Betsy and I, she just wanted to take care of us. Among the home's original furnishings was an antique wooden chair, which we kept against the back wall of the living room. Whenever we were preoccupied, watching TV or playing a game, Mother would inch that chair forward across the room towards us. Sometimes she'd manage to move it all the way to the center of the room. We always felt sad putting it back against the wall. Mother just wanted to be near us. Years later, long after we'd moved out, I found an old newspaper article about the farmhouse's original occupant, a widow. She'd murdered her two children by giving them each a cup of poisoned milk before bed. She then hung herself. The article included a photo of the farmhouse's living room with a woman's body hanging from a beam. Beneath her, knocked over, was that wooden chair, placed exactly in the center of the room. Did it get colder in here, or is it just me? Hey guys, Suburban Legends here. Just wanted to thank you for watching the video, and uh, subscribe for more videos uploaded every Monday. See you next time.